Hi, I'm Sam Hampton, and this is a fireside chat about roasting coffee. If you're looking for some green beans to turn to brown, this is not the video. This is just a short history of how I roast coffee and some of the innovative practices I use to get a good cup. The latest innovation is a spreadsheet that I made called the Green Bean Coffee Logger. It helps me to achieve repetitive and good results from my coffee roasting in a bread machine. And I'd like to share some of those things with you. So we'll take a look now at the spreadsheet and how it has helped me roast coffee. And then we'll go into some of the history of how I roast coffee from the hot air popcorn poppers to the bread machine. This is the green bean coffee logger template for XL. In order to use this in your coffee roasting, you must own a copy of Microsoft Excel or some spreadsheet that will take this Excel template and run it for you. There's a couple of things you need to know. In this uh, template, we have a timer and it runs on a macro. If you don't have your developer uh, tab up here in your ribbon, you go down to your Excel options and you can show the developer tab in the ribbon. You have to check this little box. And once you do that, then it is a security warning because macros have been disabled, you take the options and you enable the content of the spreadsheet. This will allow you to start the timer to count the seconds that the roast is in. You can stop the timer and as you start it, it will zero and then you can go see what your um, roast is doing. If you enable the macros, you'll be able to start and stop the clock. When you start it, Go to zero, and if you stop it right quick, you'll stop on zero. The sheet uh, consists of an area right in here. You can zoom in a little bit. In this little area right here, you can put in the charge temperature and the drop temperature. If you preheat, you'll want to uh, put in one temperature here. And if you drop uh, at that temperature, you'll normally do this. Uh, put a, uh, a value in here, such as 25 degrees centigrade and 25 degrees centigrade. Or it could be 100 degrees. And of course, as every 30 seconds occurs, you will enter the temperature that you read off of your uh, thermometer uh, interface uh, that you have in your roast chamber. I do not pre charge. Uh, the um, chamber. I just let it start out cold and um, 
it uh, seems to roast better that way. I just roast time, one batch right after another. Every 30 seconds, I'll enter the temperature. And what I get out of doing that is the rate of rise. And usually, this will come up to be 50 degrees within 30 seconds, probably 75. 90 and you will get the rate of rise as your roast progresses. You'll probably notice from this as you enter these temperatures in an actual roasting situation that as the beans lose their moisture, okay, the rate of rise will naturally fall. So that's the first thing that sort of I learned from this uh, little spreadsheet. And uh, it was pretty neat. We can get this to go back down. And uh, here's the chart that is generated from that data. Let's see if I can get a... little better picture here. As we go down, you'll notice that as we enter the data here, the chart will develop and you'll get your roasting profile. It will keep going up as you enter the data. Now, also marked on the chart are the various areas of the roast. We have a drying area, which is below the uh, uh, 130 degree mark. It's from zero to about 130 degrees. It will dry the beans. Then there's an area called the Maillard reaction, in which the sugars are turned into flavors. And this is a caramelization process that usually takes two to four minutes. And above that is the roasting area where the first crack occurs and the roast is finished. And as you enter this data, uh, it will uh, create the chart and give you the rate of rise so you can see what is specifically happening with your... Uh, roast. Here is the green bean coffee logger spreadsheet. It is composed of an area that you can manually enter in the roast temperatures as you roast your coffee. And from that entry, you'll get a ROR, or rate of rise, and a graph of your coffee roasting profile. The spreadsheet is broken down into a drying area, which is here, a Maillard area, which is here, and a roasting area, which is here. The drying process should take about four minutes and last to about 130 degrees, at which time the beans turn yellow. The Maillard is the caramelization time and area where the sugars are changed into flavors. And that lasts to about 100 and, 
probably 70 degrees. Above that is the roasting or, or development area that finalizes the roast. Here is a sample of the sheet that is completed for one of the roast I did. We started out at 24, went to 49, 69, 85 as the 30 second intervals uh, occurred. And here is the rate of rise 50, 40, 32, 28. You'll notice that as the beans dry out, the rate of rise without any other change decreases, which is very important to understand. That means from here on the chart to here that the beans are naturally decreasing in their rate of rise. At about 160 degrees, which is in this area here, I turned down the heat from the uh, heat gun, and the beans turned yellow, tan, and brown through the millard, and then they go through and progress to the first crack, which is about here on uh, 195 degrees and then they finish out and take about two to three minutes the uh, first crack usually lasts two to three minutes and then they finish up about 210 to 213 degrees in the bread machine at which time we stop the roast and dump them and cool the beans in order to get a temperature to read, we have to use some kind of device that will measure temperature. A multimeter that takes a K-type temperature probe can do this. And this is what I use. This one is from Harbor Freight, less than $20, and it operates on a K-type temperature probe. There are also all sorts of other devices, such as this is from Hong Kong. It is just simply not a multimeter, but just a temperature gauge that gives you both centigrade and Fahrenheit. It only costs $7.50, and they're readily available on eBay or Amazon. And you can use these to... Uh, get the temperature to enter into the green bean coffee logger. The K-type probe is fastened to the inner bucket where the beans are roasted and preferably uh, into the uh, bean mass itself. A small hole is drilled up uh, in the side by the uh, inner chamber and a piece of coat hanger is uh, used to secure and attach the wire with a uh, little bolt, nut and bolt uh, on it with a washer. And this uh, allows the K end of the K-type probe to stick down into the um, roasting chamber and records the bean temperature as they roast. It's very accurate in the sense that uh, it is down in the bean mass and is not too close to the uh, heat gun and it gives a good reading of the temperature of the beans as they roast. I took the bread machine apart and took the wires from that ran to the uh, control panel on the bread machine and redirected those wires to a couple of switches on the front of the bread machine. One for the paddle and one for the heat. There are only two wires and it's a pretty simple operation but you have to be careful because the Paddle is driven by a capacitor start motor, and that can be very, very dangerous. 
I drilled a small hole in the um, top of the uh, lid and a slightly larger hole in the other side to accommodate the heat gun so it would be in a position constant to uh, the roast and it worked out pretty doggone well. It is not really necessary to modify the bread machine. You can use it as it is. You can use the dough cycle to start the paddle and as long as it doesn't activate the heat it will be able to roast the beans and the paddle will operate and you can just absolutely use that cycle to uh, agitate the beans during the roast but you want to uh, start and stop it from the upper panel without modification the heat to roast the beans is provided by a 1500 watt heat gun from Harbor Freight 995 and this is plugged into a router control device to regulate the amount of heat that goes into the roast. I start out on high and then uh, when the Maillard complete, uh, when the Maillard reaction completes, I turn it down to 75%. But you really don't need uh, to have a router control. You could do the same thing as this uh, heat gun has two positions, two, uh, a high and a low heat, and you could just regulate the uh, roast by it, but I find that the uh, starting out on high and going to 75% gives me the perfect roast. When the roast is done, we take the beans and dump them into a colander and divide them into two portions. One goes on the pizza pan and it goes under a fan. The other goes into a colander and is placed on our little cooling fan. In that way they uh, cool in about 30 to 60 seconds and the beans are done. A really neat cooling unit can be made from a small fan that I purchased at the um, thrift store. A six inch piece of uh, flashing is uh, attached to it with uh, super glue and um, you can take it and make it so that it will hold a colander and uh, it's just a little Honeywell fan and it makes a pretty good cooling unit that cools the beans a uh, half a pound of beans within 30 seconds having a whole pound of beans to cool we have to split the batch in two I use my old uh, pizza pan and put half of the beans on the pizza pan and put it in a fan and it cools the uh, beans within about a minute. The lid of the um, bread machine was uh, modified to uh, let some of the chaff come out and I put a nozzle on the back of it so that it could be directed and captured by a screen. But most of the uh, chaff uh, in the roast goes down into the bottom of the roasting chamber and is collected there. By having a lid on the bread machine, the coffee roasting chaff is uh, confined to the bottom and it really is easy to vacuum up. It doesn't take more than a minute or two to clean out the uh, chaff and the bread machine collects it almost a hundred percent and there's no outside mess to clean up.
The popcorn machine may be the second banana, but it is still my first love. I used uh, about a dozen of these over the past three or four years, and this is my favorite, the popcorn pumper. I fashioned a K-type probe to put down in its little mouth, and it holds four ounces of beans and has a little chimney to keep the beans in and a little chaff catcher. And it still is uh, my favorite little roaster. I roasted 10 batches of 4 ounces, hooked it up to the uh, router control, and used uh, all of the uh, fan and everything to uh, cool the beans. This fan was actually made to uh, take the uh, beans from this machine and cool them. Hello again. I roasted coffee in a popcorn machine for about three years and I've modified over 10 or 12 of those units and the popcorn pumper is still my favorite. I normally roast uh, about 10 batches of 4 ounces or 40 ounces of coffee in about 2 to 2 and a half hours with a popcorn pumper. That lasted me about 2 to 2 and a half weeks. With a bread machine, I roast 40 ounces of coffee in about 30 minutes or less. It is much easier, but I don't think it's as much fun. And I sure don't gain as much knowledge of roasting as I did when I did all those small batches. During that time, I was searching for the perfect roast, and I found it in the City Plus and the Full City Roast. This is uh, Sweet Maria's card, and here are the roast. The City, the City Plus, Full City, and Full City Plus. This number 10 is what I call the Bow Derrick Roast. It is the perfect roast. It's the City Plus. But any of the 9 through 12 is a good roast. And I am sure that the one of those roast is the best roast level you can achieve for 98% of all coffee beans. Be careful about roasting by temperature or time alone. I think it takes six things to determine a roast level. Temperature, time, and touch. Smell, sight, and sound. In my bread machine, I get a perfect City Plus roast at 210 to 213 degrees. In a popcorn pumper, it is 224 degrees for the City Plus. I've heard people say, oh, roast to 260 degrees. If I roasted to 260 degrees, the beans would be charcoal. So find out what your machine will do and develop a roasting routine that will help you determine the roast level you desire. As you get deeper into roasting, I think you will find that roasting is really an art more so than a science. Having the proper roaster and tools and something like the green bean logger to help you realize what the possibilities of roasting are for you and achieving that perfect roast you desire. Here is a uh, little chart of two roasts I did at uh, different times, and they look like one roast. You can have repeatable 
good results to the roast level you want if you do due diligence in your roasting. The importance of the rate of rise is information on the uh, green bean logger sheet is very important. It is important to ramp up to the drying stage very, very quickly. In the Millard area, you want to be careful and slow down the process of roasting. In the upper area or roasting area above 170 degrees, you really want to have about a 2 to 4 uh, degree rise per minute. And the reason is this, is you want to have a development during the first crack that you can hear and complete the first crack before you get to the City Plus Roast. So if you're going at 20 degrees per minute, the that area of roast <laughs> will be about 30 seconds long. If you're going 2 to 4, it can be 2 to 4 minutes long. And it gives you more time to adjust and pull the roast at the proper time to get the proper roast level you're of trying to obtain.